Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris Dew with E1 Solutions, and I'm really excited that you've all joined us today to talk about this uh, topic of, of migration from GP, Dynamics GP, to Dynamics 365 Business Central. It's something that um, we've we've got a pretty good sized team that it's really been focused on this for a while now, and we're exciting to share some of the offerings that we have for you, and hopefully we'll. we'll become a part of your tool set as we go on, on on this journey together. Maybe just a little bit about you. For those of you that don't know me, I have been doing this a very long time and I'm still passionate about it. So over 25 years, I've either worked for Great Plains or Microsoft or E1. And most of that time has been directly working with some kind of data integration or migration scenarios. So I'm excited to join you today. Uh, I also have Ethan will be joining us a little bit later uh, in the call, but he is one of our experts that uh, really does a ton of stuff around our Smart Connect and PopDoc migration scenarios, as well as a whole host of other things. But he's going to be joining us to talk about a few of these subjects as well, and I'm excited that he's able to join us today. Okay, I think one of the things that is really interesting for us is, right, we're talking as we're talking about moving people to to really a, a whole new ERP system in some cases, right? Uh, for, for people that have been on GP for 20, 20 years, 20, maybe more than 20 years, they have a ton of data that's stored in there and there's some new things that they're gonna have to get used to. So I think there's there's a lot of opportunities for you, the partner, right, as you're going in there and proposing this new solution. But I think some of the big challenges are really around how much data do I push in to, to BC? You know, how do I access historical data that I maybe don't want to, to actually have sitting inside of the BC database? And we'll talk about some size considerations in the conversation today. And again, you know, how can I make sure that I have a full view of, of my customers' current current information and, and historical stuff? So we're going to get into some of these scenarios um, as we talk through through this today. So let's let's start with the first thing I want to talk about just very quickly. What's the agenda? So we're going to start by discussing a few terms today because we're going to get into a couple of technical terms that you know some of you may not be familiar with. Um, we're going to get into what is the overall migration strategy from E1, and then we're going to talk about three unique scenarios and making sure that you have a tool that, that can get you in each of those scenarios. Now, one key thing, right today, we are talking about moving from GP to Business Central. We're going to have a follow-up webinar if you have people that are choosing to, to stay on GP in some way, you know, shape, form. We're going to, we're going to talk, talk about the solutions we have for you there. But today, we're, was basically, we're talking about a strategy of if your customers are ready to move to uh, the BC and the cloud. We're also going to talk about where does Smart Connect fit into this picture, right? A lot of this is going to be around PopDoc, but you're going to see that um, we have the whole encompassing solution for you. And then again, we'll get into the next steps as we, as we talk about this. All right, so I said we could introduce a couple of terms. Um, again, some of this is going to get a little bit technical. So one of the, the things we're going to talk about is that some of you may already know a little bit about, but it's the cloud migration tool from Microsoft, which controls a lot of, you know, how you move your data from GP to Business Central, or it's, I should say it's one option, right, using some of their built-in things to move, you know, customers, vendors, accounts, some, some transactions, those kinds of things. So we're going to talk about the cloud migration tool, There's, which is quite a few pieces to it, but we'll talk about that. And then another term that we're talking about is, is really part of the cloud migration tool, but it's an Azure data lake. And what is an Azure data lake? Essentially, it is a, it's, it's really a storage device right, in Azure. And it allows us to, to store unstructured data, if you will. So unlike a database where you know everything has to be pretty structured on how we, we display it or store it, and a data lake lets us store files, right? So I could store JSON files or CSV files or Parquet files. You'll hear some other terms like that. This basically is something that we're going to talk about as part of the overall solution. 
All right, we said we'd start with an overall migration strategy. Like I said, we're gonna highlight three, maybe four scenarios today. But if we, we wanna make sure that we have solutions for you wherever you're at, whether it's, you know, having an Azure, the GP database sitting in an Azure SQL Server, whether it's some kind of an API that we're hitting, whether it is, again, the standard solution where we're moving stuff to a data lake from Microsoft's tool, or if it's a custom one that we have done, or again, if it's even hitting an on-premise uh, GP server for that data, we have a solution for you with PopDoc and Smart Connect together to make sure that you can see that information inside of Business Central. And we've heard this over and over again from so many of our, our partners uh, and customers too, is that they are just, um, a lot of their GP customers are struggling with, where are my smart lists, right? Where, where are those things that I had before? How do I get at that data? And so I think that's, that's one thing we'll, we'll talk about in this, this whole scenario. And one of the things when we talk about, right, is we're gonna talk a lot about um, some of the standard stuff coming from Microsoft, but we're really gonna talk today about where does PopDoc help you out in that, that uh, migration scenario and integration between your legacy GP data and, and Business Central. Okay, so let's jump right into this, um, this story here. We're gonna start with a couple of scenarios. Uh, so in this first scenario, we're talking about the cloud migration tool, which we just talked about. That's the standard tool available from Microsoft. And you've chosen to move some data with this tool. But then there's one piece of this in there that allows us to um, move other GP data that didn't necessarily make the trip. And we are going to now be able to access that data inside of um, in, inside of Business Central itself. So this is the scenario we're going to talk about here. So what are a couple of key points on this one? Well, again, using that standard migration tool from Microsoft, it, like I said, it moves tables to an Azure data lake. So what does that mean? Um, it basically is moving your SQL, the process moves SQL tables to Azure data lake tables in like a CSV or JSON format. And then those can be accessed at a later time. Um, one key point to this, and I'm, I'll maybe come back to it a little bit later too, is it does not move third-party data. This is probably one pretty critical flaw because we know a lot of our GP customers out there have you know many different uh, third-party products and being able to access some of that historical data I think is absolutely critical uh, going forward. One other thing too, uh, you'll see this in just a moment, but you'll see that we're, we're not getting the, the human readable names, right? We're getting the SQL names for tables and columns, which is gonna offer some challenges as well. And the other part here is that um, you may be moving data that really didn't need to be moved over um, from your old GP system and you have it stored and therefore you are paying for it um, as part of this solution. So let's go in and let's demo some of the stuff that's the standard from Microsoft in this, and then also we'll move into what what tools we have for for you to Okay. So I'm actually going to start instead of inside of here, I'm going to start inside of uh, Business Central. And I just want to talk about this cloud migration tool. It, like I said, there's a lot of components to it where some of them are actually moving the data. Um, some of it's you know moving transactions or, or like customers and vendors and, and accounts. Um, I'm not going to steal all any of Ethan's thunder inside of here, but, but um, there's certainly some limitations over how that, that data can be moved. So this is all gets configured right inside of an in, in extension, basically inside of Business Central is where you set up this type of stuff. You can do it for GP or NAV um, as well. But then once you have this set up, you'll see that there are some additional actions that can be run right from inside of here. And so this is where we can choose to send all of our GP data to an Azure data lake. And so this is a process that can take 
it can take quite a bit of time, right? If you have an 80 gigabyte or 100 or, you know, 300, 500 gigabyte GP database, this is a process that's it's not going to finish in just a couple hours. This is going to take, um, it's going to take some serious time to to basically grab all that data from your SQL Server and then move it into a CSV or JSON format and then upload it to that Azure Data Lake. So just letting you be prepared for if you have not run that, um, that is something that can take a while too. As well as you still have your migration, right? If you haven't done the, the moving of data, your customers, vendors, some of the transactions and accounts and things like that, that there's certainly going to be some processing time on that as well. So we're going to talk specifically about this Azure Data Lake. I've already run this process, so I'm going to show you what it actually looks like inside of Azure. And you can see I have a data lake set up. Again, a data lake is really just an Azure uh, storage account, right? We're storing a blob storage, and you can see inside of here what you're going to get when you specify the storage account is going to, it's going to create a container in here called GP database. When I click on that, you're going to see I get a number of folders inside of here. And so you're going to have one for your, your Dynamics database, right? And what you're going to see inside of here, you're going to start seeing it as I, you're going to get a CSV and a JSON and then also some metadata about that table for every table that's in that database. Right, so that's for the, the, the Dynamics database, but if you went and looked at you know, the one of the company databases, you can see it splits it into some folders. And if I wanted to go look at my sales folder, you can see we're basically getting SQL table names. So I just wanted to let you know this is what this solution is doing today. And then what I'm gonna show you next is how PopDoc can actually hit that information. So if I go ahead and go inside of PopDoc now, um, I, I can, if we look at this, and I, it's going to load up one of my existing, so this is all my SOP line history inside of here, it looks like. There we go. So that's pulling directly from a data lake. That's not coming from GP. It's it's pulling from that that data lake sitting out there in in the cloud. Now, a couple things you should notice right away, right? A lot of these fields, it doesn't say SOP number. It says SOP number. That's right coming right from SQL. Uh, and and so those are some things to to be aware of. And again, you can see I can have as many as many of the tables as I've I've decided to push out there. So you can see I've only done like maybe eight eight of the tables, but I could quickly go to the customer master and you can see another thing here, we got to pick which fields that we might want. So I'll just pick a couple of fields. And so now it's pulling from that data lake. So that's fine inside of PopDoc, but that's not really where you want to see the data, is it? You are going to want to see that data somewhere else. So before I show you that, I'm going to show you how easy it is to to add that data. So let's say instead of one of those um, lists that I've shown you so far, if I want to go inside of here and I want to add a new list, I can do this. You can see that I could, if I wanted to add maybe some inventory transactions or something like that, or just I'll just add inventory items. That's just easy. So I can click, you know, any of these data lake lists that have been pushed out there, and now you can see it's adding it so that we can access that from from the data lake. And so now um, here's what I'm going to show you is if I go into where this is embedded inside of Business Central, I'm going to add that that new inventory list that we just added inside of there so we can see it. So here we go. We're just going to add a new list. I'm going to add it to the my GP data lake list. And there's our new IV 101 list. And I should have added some fields earlier, but I didn't. So we'll find that in a second. And now if I go back inside of here, and if I go ahead and pull up 
this list. And I, for now, I'm just going to stick with our data lake. But you can see here's the, here's the one that I pushed out there. I forgot to put it in, in the right folder. Um, so I'll click on this one. I don't have any column. I didn't choose any columns, so we should probably... I'll just add those three columns. Okay. Let me show you one of the other ones I already have out here. So let's say, like, again, the customer master that we had placed out here. Oh, okay. I know what I'm doing. I have a favorite of this one, so I actually have the columns already. Oh, man. Okay. This is what I'm messing up. <laughs> I forgot. Remember, we had three companies. I forgot to select the company that I needed up at the top. And so you can see I could pull from just this one company or I could also click this and I could actually see customers coming from both of those, those, uh, or I should say SOP lines coming from both of the companies. So that's what's pretty cool is that you can actually combine data coming from multiple companies inside of there. But you'll see that this is now showing this data right inside of Business Central and I have access to all of my, my historical GP uh, information coming from that data lake. Okay, and just to prove that I was being a moron earlier, um, now that I have a company selected, <laughs> now let's pick our columns. There we go, let's pick a couple columns. And now you can see we have all of our data, but again, it has the SQL names, which are not, in my book, are not necessarily the greatest for human readability. Okay, so that's kind of our first look at, um, I guess, at what we're looking at with just the standard Microsoft solution. So let's talk about what could be the, the next solution in this. In this scenario. Okay, and this is really more of a hybrid approach. So you're still using the cloud migration tool, maybe for some, you know, some of the moving of data into PC. But then you're saying, you know what? I don't want to push maybe just all of all of my entire database and put it into that data lake. I still maybe want to archive some some information in a data lake that's easy to maintain. But now I'm, I want some more control over what lists I put out there and what favorites. And so, again, a lot of people, they have some really great smart lists that they built um, just in the standard smart list or, or using smart list builder. And they want to be able to access some of that data, um, you know, when they need to see it right inside of Business Central. So we're going to get into this now. What, what are some key points on this? We're still using the cloud migration tool I talked about, but now instead of using the cloud migration tool to move the, the historical GP data to a data lake, we're using PopDoc to move that data to the data lake. And again, you're, you have more control over which data you actually want to send there. So that's the part we're gonna talk about next. Um, we can move our smart lists and favorites. And so the, the key there is you have names that you understand, right? For, for tables and, and, uh, and columns inside of there, you know it instead of C-U-S-T-N-M-B-R, you know it's customer number or customer or whatever whatever you've called it. So those are some great things is you're going to get that. And again, if you don't need 20 years of data, right, maybe you only need 10 years of data inside of there. That's all you want to keep. You're going to be able to do, do that type of scenario. So um, I think one of the other things, too, is we're, we're talking about GP specifically but you're going to be able to move um, other lists, right? So if you had, whether it could be views, but it could be coming from, you know, some other other type of system, some cloud-based system, help desk system, you can move that information in there as well and, and allow this, that to be accessed right inside of Business Central. And the, one of the key things here too is, this is a really important point. Um, some, of the, some of the tables that you're going to want to move like uh, sales orders, sales order lines, purchase order, purchase order lines. 
those tables are huge and some of them have you know 350 or more fields in them well most of those fields are meaningless to you as, as if you're looking up some historical data it probably comes down to 10 20 maybe 30 40 you know fields that you would actually ever care to see and so this gives you some control over not having to store so much data if you're never ever going to use that you can just pick the fields that you want and then end up with a much much smaller um, you know data set that you can pull up um, going forward and then here's a really big point to this one accessing all your third-party data this is absolutely critical I, I think I think Microsoft kind of missed missed the missed the boat on on that in, in our overall solution um, by ignoring third-party data even even stuff like your smart lists and your extender uh, as well as you know all your stuff from binary stream to ethotech to Wensoft to whatever it is um, it's it's amazing that that you can't archive that data in that in that data warehouse as well so we're going to get right into i'm going to show you how you can do some of these things and the control that you have uh, over it okay we're going to go back into uh, the gp connector for just a second and I, I think this is an important part. I want to show, make sure that you understand when you are connecting to GP data, and I got the wrong one. Too many connectors. When I connect to, to my GP data inside of here, if I want, you know, while there's a bunch of lists that come out of the box, um, you're never stuck. You can add anything, you know, that has an extender window, anything you built in Smart List Builder, you can check, 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 and then get those Smart Lists, even Baby Smart List Builder from Microsoft, right? If you chose to do this for your customers, you can add these lists as well and and, and add them, you know, right to, to your offering from PopDoc. And then again, obviously we can go down to the, the table and even, you know, the view level as well if you need to you know, do some more complex things so we can access any of those lists but then again the whole point i think is um you're going to do something with the list so if i like pull up this one for example my account transactions inside of here i i think this is a fairly good size list i think i have like twenty five thousand records or something like that um, but you can see i have a favorite and so instead of pulling every last field um, from this list, I can pull just the, the fields that I want in my favorite. And then that's something I can utilize uh, later on in, in this process. Okay, it's taking its time. There we go, yeah, 20, 22,000 um, some records. So that was pulling directly from my GP uh, database in, in this case. So that's what this one is is doing. You can see the little GP icon on here. And you can see that I've I've eliminated um, you know some of the some of the fields. I just got it down to five or six fields that are important to me. So this is what I want to show you again. This is just a standard GP interface inside of here. But if I go now back to um, a connector and we're going to go into a different connector this time. We're going to go into this uh, this Azure Data Lake connector that I have, and instead of um, you know picking the GP one, this is where I can add any list that I want. And I need to log out into another system for just a second. This one feature I'm about to show you is. It's still in test, so it's almost ready to go. Okay, an important button that you didn't see in the other one <laughs> yet is the capability of uploading a, a new list. And so what does this mean? Well, I can take any of my connectors out here and so, for example, if I wanted to pull something from one of my GP connectors, I can pick, you know, that GP if we wanted to just send, oh, I've already done some of these. I think I've already done 
let's see if I can do inventory items here. Um, so you can see if you had had favorites, you can publish just those favorites. So if you had 10 different favorites, some people are going to want to you know push this out 10 different times. I'll pick just the default on this one for now, and we'll just call this migration just so we know it's for us today. And I can pick a group that I'm going to put it. So I'll just put it right in my GP group. And so what this is doing, basically, this is saying, hey, we pointed to our GP connector, but now we want to push this data up to that data lake. So you can see this is something that's pretty easy to do. Uh, it basically is take any piece of, of data um, from GP and push that information uh, into that, that system. So if we go back and pull up a new tab here now, and instead of coming from GP, we're going to go to this data lake. It should be done uploading by now. Items migration. And there we go. There's there's our um, everything that we have, but now it's coming from the data lake instead of directly from GP. We we've added all the columns, right? Because I didn't do any favorites, so I could add you know any of these columns that made sense, and you still have access to all the extra data. But here, here's the key now, right? Is that I can go back inside of um, inside of that widget that's going to go inside of Business Central in this case. And I can add that new list. So let's do this, and then we'll show show it to you inside of Business Central. And I'm going to add it to. I have one called Smart Lists, so we'll add that one. And we'll pick our items migration. Okay, so that's how easy it is. Now, if we go back inside of here, and I'm just going to open up that window again so we get the new list that's there. I'll even pick a company this time just so I don't mess myself up. <laughs> and so if I go back inside of here, you see I have um, under this, the smart list section, I have the items migration. So there's the new one that we just pushed inside of there. And there you go. We have the, those fields, and again, I can add any of the extra columns that I want. But you'll see is we now have the nice names for these, right? So if I if I switch to, um, again, one of the other things, if I switch to sales transactions, for example, we're now getting SOP type instead of, uh, you know, SOP type, and we're getting SOP number and customer PO number. These are better names, right, that you're used to seeing from inside of, of the GP interface. So this is pretty cool is that we can have this embedded inside of BC and we can access it when, whenever we need to um, from this interface. Okay, I think an important thing to maybe talk about at this point in time is I'm sh I've showed you some of the, you know, the standard, standard Microsoft stuff, anything from a smart list. Um, one important thing, and before I move on to the next section, but a lot of times you're going to need to see maybe some of your current information that's inside of BC and you're going to need to see some of your historical information together. And basically PopDoc is going to allow us to create what we call a merge list that allows us to take data from that data lake and data from BC and give you one list that has all of the sales transaction history, for example, that your customer may need. Okay, so that's kind of the, the second scenario, right, where we are, um, we're really giving you, we're, we're giving you the capability of pushing any smart list, if you will, so that you have the nice, pretty names for, for use. We're going to talk about a third option here, right, is there are some people that say, hey, you know, I don't really want to mess with a, um, a data lake. Right, I, I just want to maybe archive my entire SQL uh, server out there. And so there are some options for you that um, you can basically move your, your GP database and your company databases to like an Azure SQL. And, and now if you move it there, now you get some of the things like the same smart lists, right? All the smart lists and all your third-party data 
all those things become available to us much like the other one, except that instead of being a, a direct um, to a data lake, you're now hooking up to a SQL server. And so it gives us some more flexibility even there. Again, as part of this whole scenario, I think you still would be using, you might be using cloud migration tool for, for moving the data to BC, but you don't necessarily need that Azure data lake, right? That's, that's something that is not needed anymore. And again, you get full access to all your smart lists and favorites and all your third-party data. So let's just talk about this one. This will be a pretty quick demo because we kind of, we've covered a lot of it already. But basically, I'm going to point to a different connector. Instead of the data lake connector, I have a GP connector so that if I wanted to embed something like my purchase order line items, and now you'll see, right, I'm hooked directly into that SQL server. And so you can see I have all the nice names for, for those companies. So I could pick one or more of these companies to pull that data from. And there we go. Here's my purchase orders right inside of Business Central. So for some people, this is a, a really good option. Uh, I think some, some of the things that do concern people is that there, there might be some additional costs, right? Because you are now using Azure, um, Azure SQL to host your your Dynamics database if you want to, you know, move it off off premise. But it's something that I, I should basically point out. It's there for you as an option. And one thing I guess before we move on to the next section, um, we haven't talked about it, but obviously the, some of this other data in here is actually coming from Business Central in this case, right? And so if I wanted to look at, you know, my posted sales invoice lines, now I have to pick my Business Central company instead. And there you go. Now I'm seeing Business Central data right inside of BC. So this is kind of your smart lists. We've given it to you so you have this interface right inside of Business Central to get to whatever data that you need. You have control to create custom lists and make that part of your your whole solution for for your gp customers i think that's a huge a huge uh, for a lot of people it's a huge hurdle is that they really struggle when they go to bc and that they don't necessarily have the same access to data and so popdoc really gives him the power to to do that okay so those are the three main scenarios that we talked about but i want to turn it over to Ethan at this point in time. And I think we got two slides, which I'll just show the slides for you, Ethan, and let you talk to him. And then, uh, what? Yep, that sounds good. There's one question in the box oh. I think we should ask real quick. Okay. Um, does uploading those lists create multiple copies in your Azure Data Lake? Um, yes, it does. It creates both a a JSON file. So let's just take the, the customer master, the RM00101. Um, by moving that, it'll create a rm00101.json.json, .json, and it'll also create a rm00101.csv. And and also a third file that's kind of a metadata file uh, inside that says, you know, here's this column is actually a um, it's a decimal. This this column is a string. This column is, you know, a drop down list. So those for every table you have in your SQL database, it'll put three of those things out there. Yep, and so then does the, it do the same for the smart list? Like if you pushed your own list up with PopDoc? Smart list is only going to put one list out there. Um, it, whatever you push. So it's it's only going to put, like, we, we use a, a format called Parquet. Uh, we found that to be the fastest so far. Uh, it gives us a really good structure for for querying um, these these types of files. Because we, we got to be real, right? So if you have 20 years of data and they have huge amounts of sales transaction history or purchase history or inventory history, um, some of these files are going to be hundreds of megabytes or, or maybe even gigabytes right some of them might be gigabytes worth of of data and so being able to work with those big files is, is going to be really important and that's we found that parquet was the best format so yes sorry in a, in a lot of words we're only putting one file out there um, when it's pop duck handling it 
Was there any other ones needed to be asked right now? I think that's it for now. So okay. we can jump into how do we migrate the data that we actually want to move rather than putting it in the data lake. It's something that we've decided needs to go into Business Central. So it's going to be some of the obvious things like your uh, master accounts, your starting balances. So bring over things like customers, vendors, items, and then also you'll need those customer starting balances. You might need to bring over things like fixed assets, inventory levels, um, all those things you need so that you can hit the ground running in Business Central from day one. Um, outside of that, there may be all that historical data, which uh, Chris Dew has been talking about up until now. So if we go to the next slide, we can talk about how we work with Smart Connect and PopDoc. So our team has worked hard to come up with a solution that's going to give you the quickest go to market with this. So how can you implement quickly a migration strategy that's still going to be customizable enough that it's not going to lock you in and require a developer to be involved or something like that. So on the first bullet point, we wanna connect and transform your existing data. So the most important thing is to pull out that data. So when it comes to retrieving the data from your Dynamics GP database, we are looking to use PopDoc for that because of all of those querying capabilities that Chris Dew has been talking about, we're gonna use that and we are going to be able to retrieve your data from GP, maybe even from multiple companies of GP and import that into one or more Business Central companies. So I'll go over that with a quick demo in a little bit here. Um, so we'll have that multi-table capability. So even if everything you want isn't just in one GP table, we can query across as many of them as we need, and we could potentially bring in data from other systems. Um, so this isn't just limited to GP. If it's a company that has other places where they've been storing data historically and they wanna bring it all together into Business Central, you can use PopDoc and Smart Connect to query that data from multiple places bring it together and push it all into your new system. You can define whatever key you want. So part of the flexibility of Smart Connect is that you can decide what is going to be the unique key. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the default number field within Business Central that you want to use as your key. It could be an external key. It could be a custom field. It could be anything you want. So that's going to give you that extra level of flexibility that's not always available without needing to do some custom development and using XML ports and the likes within Business Central. And as always, you'll have all of the error handling capability within Smart Connect. So this is gonna be really powerful when you're worrying about it, uploading what could be 50,000 records at a time. Maybe you're uploading a million records at a time. Smart Connect doesn't care, but you don't wanna run a million records, have five of them fail, and then have to run a million records just to get those five in again. So what we've done with Smart Connect is you have that error handling capability. So you can say these five records failed. I'm gonna correct what was wrong with the data on those five and then re-upload them. There's no reason for me to spend a whole bunch of time waiting for everything to go in again. And on the next slide, we were going to demo. Perfect. So I'm gonna take over presenting. All right, so perfect. We're gonna start here in PopDoc. So PopDoc is where our story begins when we're talking about migration. We connect to Dynamics GP. So in this case, we're using just that generic GP connection, which is connecting to your SQL database and has already cleaned some of the data into a format that's easier to understand. We're not using table names anymore. And what we're going to do is we're gonna provide some custom lists called these migration lists. So they're gonna be things like migration customers, vendors, items, and we'll rename the field so that it's in the format of where it's gonna go in Business Central. So when you're looking at the data, comparing your source data to your where you want it to go in Business Central, you can see what doesn't look right and what does. So things like maybe the tax area codes, those don't match what I had set up in Business Central, so I know I'll either need to modify those in 
side of PopDoc potentially or in Excel or someplace else before I import that data. I can scroll over, see I'm bringing in billing address information. I've pulled in their email and phone from their address information. I have everything that I need in here. If I thought there was something missing, we still have that add column capability that you saw earlier. So you can quickly add anything else that's related to this customer that we didn't have in here by default. If I click this edit icon, we can jump into how this was actually created. What we're using is called a joined list. So I can join together multiple lists. So in this case, I joined the customer to addresses so I could get the customer detail along with whatever was set up as their default billing address and bring all that data in. I could potentially add another list. Again, doesn't need to be just GP. We could bring in anything here. I can go out and select something else. So if I were to grab customers again, it doesn't make any sense. Define exactly which fields I wanted to join on from the two data sets. And then you could quickly add that as another list. Then I would be able to add any fields from that list that I just added. So if I want to add more from my customer addresses, I can select which of these fields I want to add in here and have access to as well. You can add other fields to your default. Um, out of the box, we're going to provide a bunch of defaults for all the fields that we feel are potentially going to be needed. And we'll provide a mapping for all of those fields. But it'll be very quick and easy for you to add additional detail if you want beyond what we provide in our out of the box templates. So I have this data in PopDoc. But all PopDoc does is it queries data, it joins data, it gives you a visibility the uh, capability to quickly add different companies, to add columns, or one thing we haven't really talked about is you can add filters. So if you wanted to only upload customers from certain countries at one time, or you wanted to do more of a phased approach based on some other criteria, you can add any filters you want. Once you have the selection of data that you want to use, you can simply export it. And it'll just create a Excel file. I'm not going to export it because I already have one. And in here, I have my Excel file with all of that data. So as long as you're using Excel and you have the 64-bit version, you can have up to a million in some rows. So there's really not a hard limit on how much data you can manipulate at one time. So the process that we're taking with our migration strategy is you query all of the data, you pull out everything you need, you get it into Excel. Once it's in Excel, I can decide what data I want. I could remove any columns I didn't want. I could remove any rows I didn't want to move over to the other system. But the main thing here is I can clean my data. When you're migrating, you don't want to bring over dirty data. You don't want to bring over all of the problems of the old system. You want to take this as an opportunity to manipulate the data. So at the end of the day, we could do scripting. We could do complex um, integration scenarios with multi-data sources and creating calculations, doing all sorts of stuff. But anyone can work with Excel. So in Excel, I can identify some of my customers don't have payment terms codes. So now this is something I can give to the accountant and say, you need to clean up these records before we import them. And the accountant can go through, look in, identify these customers, can fix those records and say, these should all be 30 days as well. And it's going to be a quick and easy thing for them to fix that data without them having to clean it all within GP or in Smart Connect or something like that. So once they've gone through, you've corrected all the data, it, you think it's good, it's ready to do an upload, you can jump over to Smart Connect, where we will have templates already available that are just going to pull based on those Excel files. If I go down to my destination, I don't want to spend too much time in Smart Connect, just as it is a means to get that data into Business Central and to have the reporting. We're not doing anything fancy here. We're deciding what our key is. So I said that the number field is going to be my key. I've told it to update if the record already exists. So basically, I can use this same method multiple times. So if I keep importing and some records fail, I want to import them all again. Or later, I come back and decide I need to add another field to every record, I can update them, which is going to be a really nice 
way of doing it without having to delete 10,000, 100,000 records and then re-import all of them again. So I can quickly add any other field mappings that I want. As soon as you add fields to your Excel file, they'll show up over here. And then you can add those in here to your mapping. I'm only doing this to one company. So I have selected one company in here. I'm saying to import them into my company. We have the ability to import into multiple companies at the same time. So if there was something that needed to go into every company, like maybe an item or something like that, or you want to import your accounts into everyone so that you have all your GL accounts are the same in every company, you can do that. You can select this and it'll import it one record into each of these every time. If you exported that column way over here to the left with your company in it, then you could potentially use that to define a custom company structure. So if I went into Smart Connect, I could look at that company source column and say, if the company is equal to a specific value directed into one company or the other. So this is gonna give you that ability to allow, again, more of just an end user of the data to be able to manipulate the data and run these integrations that can be potentially very tricky to write if you were just doing it in Smart Connect and trying to use calculations and all of that because they just clean the data in Excel, which they understand. Once I run the integration, if for some reason it were to fail, I'm not gonna make you sit and wait for me to run it, so I already did. I ran my 111 records and two failed. So we have that normal Smart Connect capability where it tells me exactly what my error is. I can see United States, which I know is not a valid country code. So I'm just gonna tell it to fix it right inside Smart Connect. So I'm gonna correct those two records so that their country codes are US. And then I can just tell it to run all of this. And now I've successfully imported those last two records. Once you've imported all of your records, we can go back to PopDoc and we can validate that. So if you wanted to know if all of your records had successfully imported, you could use a compare list. So PopDoc has the capability to pull two data sets to potentially very large data sets and compare them to figure out if a record exists in both or does not. So if I were to create, I think this is checking in different business central, but what it does is it's a very easy to set up connection. So I'm connected to GP data over here, my business central company that I'm importing to, and then I'm telling that these fields need to match. So the customer number in GP needs to match the customer number in Business Central. And I'm bringing in the name just so I can see. But I'm identifying those differences between the two databases. So if it finds any records that are not existing in both, I know that those are a problem and I need to go back and correct them. So we are going to take this full loop using PopDoc. We're going to use an initial PopDoc list to pull all of my data out of GP, get that data into Excel, clean the data any way that is needed in Excel in an easy to edit format, then I'll upload that data with Smart Connect. And you can upload the data as many times as you need to get it right within Business Central so that you're comfortable with it and you can move forward from there. Very good. Ethan, um, I know there's a, a whole lot of scenarios, right, where people are going to need to manipulate some data. Uh, again, a lot of times, I, I think what we've heard so far is that many customers are taking this opportunity to, uh, I got to be careful using the word re-implement, but in many many cases, it, it really is that. It's a chance for them to look at their business processes and how they've done stuff and, and make sure that everything is good going forward. So what are some of the other scenarios that, that you you have seen? I, I think we've heard some stuff around accounts, um, that people wanted to manipulate some data around accounts and like new account structures. It's definitely 
one of the things that we've found while working on these templates and talking to our partners and people in the community about what they're looking for is that it's not a perfect scenario because these are two separate products, GP and NAV, which is now Business Central, come from a different background. The data structure is different. The business process is different. And depending on how old your GP system is, you could be potentially having 10 years of things changing and industry standards changing. And you need to take all that into account when you do it. So in terms of differences that come up is, yes, GL accounts are a big one where you a lot of companies are redoing their account structure as they move over, particularly because you can have more segments in GP than you can have um, within Business Central. And then once you get beyond that in Business Central, you need to start talking about dimensions and how you want to use dimensions, how dimensions matches up to your old account structure. If you're using analytical accounting, if you're using anything like that, you need to be able to manipulate that data um, to account for those differences in data structure. So it can be, it can be a little bit of work to kind of wrangle all of that data into the right way for it to import. But um, we're definitely trying to create some good solutions that are going to cover a lot of areas. So I do see there is another question right now about which entities we are going to create box templates for. Um, right now, I think we have about 11 or 12 that we're working on. Um, so we're going to do things that are the obvious ones like customers and vendors and items, warehouses. Um, but we're also going to do things like fixed assets. We'll make sure we get you all of your shipping addresses. We'll get you those opening sales invoices. Um, we are still digging into a couple of areas around like fixed assets and things where we're trying to identify just how much data we need to bring in and how much data can stay in the data lake or historical GP database. So if you have any feedback after this, anything you want to let us know that you feel this is an entity that needs to be part of our package solution, do let us know so that we make sure we get that added. Well, I think it's a good segue. Um, <laughs> we we do covet your feedback. And so um, this is one one thing that uh, I don't know if you do you want to talk to this slide. Ethan, or do you want me to? Yeah, I can okay. I can talk to this, but um, yeah, we just want to understand that everyone has a different story. Everyone wants to do something a little bit different with their migration strategy. And so at E1, we're working on creating these templates that we feel will meet the masses in need. But this is something that anyone can do. You can take our templates and you could create your own custom solution for what you see as a common scenario. Maybe you have a vertical that you want to be able to better address. You can do that using our templates. You can reach out to our team for assistance in how we created our templates and use that as a starting point for creating your own options. Or if there's other things that you would like us to include out of the box, we could definitely include those as well. So. We want this to be a dialogue between us and our partners to so make sure that what we're doing is what you need and that we're giving you the best tools that we can to help make the migrations easier. Yes, absolutely. So we, we, covet, we covet that feedback. And like I said, what, what we have today and what we have, you know, <laughs> coming in the, in the coming months is, is going to entirely depend on, on the feedback we get from you. We're trying to, handle every scenario that you guys may run into right like I said we, we know everybody's going to want to approach it a different way some people want to do the the standard microsoft migration some people say you know what it may just make more sense to to start from the ground up using smart connect and pop doc together so you're you're gonna we're gonna give you options for any which way you choose to approach that Okay, we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up. I have two more slides. Um, the next steps that we have from you out of this uh, 
onto this presentation today is we, we do have a, a dedicated landing page for, for migrations at e1solutions.com slash migration. This is where we're going to be putting more and more of these materials, right? You'll have links to the templates that Ethan's been talking about. And again, uh, further resources on, on how you can dive deeper. That survey that we just talked about, I think it's important too, is if you want to provide some feedback and, and get get some skin in the game on, and ask, you know, how how can we help you? We would love to work with you guys on that. And then very soon we're going to have some some packaged offers that um, that Ethan, again, has been spending a ton of time on, but something that you can have out there you can that you can make as part of your offering to your customers to to help them as they they move from from a you know their current GP system to BC in the cloud. And then we have two more webinars coming up. One, this has been right focused on moving away from GP and and then moving to business central. Um, the next webinar we have is a couple of other scenarios that if you have customers that, that want to stay on GP or looking at some of the other uh, GP options is that we have we have solutions for you that, that can basically bring them um, into this you know the next the next century on on how they can still use their GP data and still be effective. So that's that's the first webinar then we have a second, webinar series it's really going to be more towards the customers so if you want to start inviting your customers that are interested in starting to to look at that process um, we're gonna we're gonna give an you know an offering there that um, we're gonna maybe again maybe not as technical as some of those we talked about today we really wanted to give it to you first as as our partners and make sure you're armed and dangerous and so we're, we're gonna do a customer facing webinar that you can if you can feel free to invite your customers to and uh, and hopefully we have you know solutions that'll that'll meet their needs. I think last of all we just have um, a, a section we want to open it up for more questions. Uh, I encourage you to probably use the questions pane. We have a couple more questions that are in there that we'll we'll tackle right now. But if you if you want to get your question answered right now, please uh, ask ask it in the questions pane if you will. So let's see. Let's look at some of the other questions that are in here. Um, okay, I got one asking what versions of GP will this work for? That's one really nice part of the solution is no matter which way you approach it, uh, whether again, if you're moving stuff to a data lake or you know directly hitting it in SQL, if it's basically GP, GP10, GP2010 on up, we're gonna be able to hit that information and not have any problems with it. So um, that's that's a really nice solution on that. Um, I got another question saying, what's the best option out of the options we presented? Okay, that that's a loaded question, really. Um, I I probably would lean towards the second one we presented. The second one is is really saying, hey, instead of moving all of the data to to uh, you know to a data lake. Or again, even another option we didn't really talk about, but it, it, that would be like migrating all of the data into Business Central. Um, I think probably kind of that hybrid approach where you, you do some parts of the migration, but then you let PopDoc handle moving moving the data that you need in the data lake, letting it use the smart lists and the favorites that you already use. I guess those kinds of things right, aren't going away. If, if you've used the same smart list for 10 years, why not make that available um, to them in a historical sense of the word? So to me, that probably makes the most, most sense as, uh, as far as data storage, right? Why, why store data that you're never ever gonna use again? Uh, so just put the data that you need out there and get the friendly names that your end users are gonna like and all of your existing smart lists and favorites. Okay, um, I've got a question on who will manage the Azure Data Lake instance. Okay, that's that's a really good question. Um, so, one of our huge tenants that we have at at uh, E1 here is that we don't want to store your data, right? That is, um, we want to be very careful with that. And so, the Data Lake is actually, like I said, it's a storage. Uh, 
a storage account in, in your Azure subscription. So this will be in the customer's Azure subscription, right? They would spin up something, or again, if you were hosting it for one of your customers, um, you could spin it up in, in, your, in your account if that made sense. But they're basically gonna have their own storage account and that will be maintained by, by them. And we're just gonna be pushing, pushing data or pulling data from from that uh, data lake. So, yep, we do not store anything. It will be uh, that storage account on on your Azure account or the customers, I should say. Good question. Okay, here's another one. Um, interesting one. What what are the average service hours needed to set up these scenarios? Okay, and again, this could this could vary widely because um, you, you have a couple of components, right? You have the amount of data that needs to be moved. So again, no matter whether you're choosing Smart Connect to move the data, or again, if you're choosing Microsoft to, to migrate data or even push it to a data lake, uh, there is certainly gonna, it's gonna take time to, like I said, pull the SQL information out and then, you know, push it into whether, whether it's inside a BC or a data lake. And so some of those hours are really hard to define. Again, I think some of the templates that we're going to have in packages we will have that a little a little more defined in in the coming weeks here, where as we as we nail those things down. But um, I guess what I would be really careful for you without knowing how much data they have, right? If they have 25 years of of GP history, um, you, you need to find out what they need to move. And again, if they have if they have 200 gigabytes, right? There's there's certainly costs. Whether whether it be if you pump it into BC, there's going to be costs. Like if you go over 80 gigabytes, you're you're going to start paying uh, quite a bit for that data. Uh, but then there's even there's even costs if you go like the SQL option as well, right? If you put it in Azure SQL database, you're going to have some costs there, or even uh, a storage container. While it's that's very probably the cheapest storage that there is, um, there certainly will be some cost to you know, ongoing um, just to store that data there. So it's just something to think about. That's why, again, I wouldn't necessarily dump all of my data. I would dump just the, the data I wanted out there. Okay, good question. Okay, we got another question over here. When using the BC migration tool, can you choose to not migrate customers, for example, and then use PopDoc and Smart Connect to migrate customer records? Um, Yes, there are there are some well okay. In the standard cloud migration tool when you choose to run the migration, it doesn't give you a ton of flexibility. It it mainly gives you like um we're going to move customers, we're going to move vendors, we're going to move some hist some uh, small amounts of history. You know, forget beginning balances, but it doesn't say here's the options it gives you it says do you want inactive customers do you want inactive vendors so it doesn't really give you an option it's, it's basically saying we're going to do it um, one way just you choose how many of them are coming so i've chosen when i've done these these sample ones um, i've chosen to not run the migration itself i've just set up the cloud migration tool and then i've just actually used smart connect if i wanted to move stuff into that company or again ran the Azure Data Lake uh, conversion to push that up there. So that's a great question. Okay, another question out here is, does each customer need to be licensed for PopDoc to use this? Or can we just use our account, our partner account? Um, yeah, you would, you would, you would create this for each customer because they're gonna have access, like I said, their, their own data lake will be in their Azure account, most likely. And so you're gonna to wanna to have a connector for that. So each of them would have their own PopDoc account that could connect to their own BC, their own, again, their own data lake, their own GP, whatever the data may be. And, and that's what'll serve it up for it inside of Business Central. Okay, and no, I think this is the last question I have. So this is your last chance to ask any more questions. I got one saying, do you have any promotions or packages uh, coming? Um, yes, very, very soon. Again, if you go to that migration page, you're gonna see some of those packages show up. Like I said, we're just, we're trying to get all of the, if you want our team to do it, right, the services around it, 
but we're trying to make sure that if you need Smart Connect and PopDoc and some services, we have everything that you need and you guys can choose which, which is the best package for you to deliver to your customer. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in. So I wanna thank everybody for attending. Again, I encourage you to fill out that survey and uh, hopefully you guys have a wonderful week and maybe we can get your customers to the next one. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.